The FCC's C-band spectrum auction has concluded, and the carriers are spending insane amounts of money to expand their 5G networks. Hi, I'm Chris at the Mobile Internet Resource Center, here to give you an update on the future of 5G cellular, and in particular, the spectrum in the United States. So we reported back in December on the FCC's C-band auction. This was an auction of a whole new big swath of airwaves in the uh, upper 3.5 gigahertz um, spectrum bands that the FCC was going to be auctioning off to highest bidders to make way for our new 5G cellular capacity. And this spectrum is considered Goldilocks spectrum by the carriers. It is not super long range like the low band, low frequency stuff, but it is much, much faster than that low frequency spectrum. And it is not insanely ridiculously fast like the millimeter wave spectrum, but that millimeter wave spectrum is insanely short range. So mid band spectrum is is the Goldilocks spectrum. It's right in the middle. It gives you a combination of range and speed so you can start to roll out 5G networks that are truly next generation, truly very vastly different than what was possible on 4G. But, well, you could also start to roll it out over a longer range than just tiny core urban area millimeter waves. And the catch in the United States is there has not been a lot of this mid-band spectrum around. T-Mobile bought Sprint to acquire Sprint's mid-band spectrum, but um, there's not been a lot else available because it was all locked up by satellite incumbents who controlled most of the airwaves and weren't doing a lot with them. So the FCC has had this auction in the process for years to auction, basically force some satellite providers off their spectrum and auction the spectrum off for cellular usage. That auction happened over December and January, and now the results are published at the end of February, and it went gangbusters. The estimates were they were going to spend, carriers would spend about $50 billion tops. It actually pushed to nearly $81 billion to buy access to use this spectrum nationwide. And now that the specific results are out, we know who put down the money, and it was Verizon. Big Red Verizon is spending $45 billion to buy up C-band spectrum nationwide, and they're putting down an additional nearly well, eight, nine billion dollars to pay off those satellite incumbents to move off that spectrum early so they can start using it by December 2021. So this is a huge, ridiculously huge bet by Verizon to say this is our future. We are laying down a beachhead for our 5G using C-band spectrum. Now, now, they had to be bidding against somebody, so cl clearly uh, other carriers were in the auction as well. AT&T also went in big. They spent over $20 billion on um, buying C-band spectrum um, to also get nationwide coverage, but their, most of their spectrum will not be available until the end of 2023, so at and kind of keeping it in reserve for future expansions. T-Mobile also did the same, buying more spectrum, not nationwide, but regionally, um, spending still billions and billions of dollars, and U.S. Cellular also spent a lot of money to lay out more spectrum in their core areas, but Verizon was the one who went went big, went hard, and set out to be kind of the clear winner in this auction by buying the most valuable spectrum, the spectrum that will be available at the end of 2021. So, wow, this is great. Verizon's going to have this huge jump up in 5G speeds and capacity, right? Well, sort of, probably, but they're spending so much money on buying the Spectrum, they still need to, to have money left over to actually build out the towers and take advantage of it. Because, well, C-band Spectrum, I said it's the Goldilocks Spectrum, it's kind of in that sweet spot of long range, but you know, long enough range to be reasonable for wide deployments, but still super fast. But it is at the short range of mid-band Spectrum, so it doesn't actually have really, really long range which means Verizon's going to have to build a whole lot of new towers to push this C-band spectrum out into um, wider use. So this is going to be a really interesting year ahead. Clearly, Verizon paid so much money for this head start on the other carriers, so you think they're going to actually want to do something with this by the end of 2021, but how and where they'll be investing is going to be hard to know. So what does this, what does this mean for you planning ahead? Well, this means if you have... 5G gear, you really want to seek out devices that are band N77 compatible. This is the new C-band spectrum. And 
basically nothing, no 5G devices that came out in 2020 other than the iPhone 12 have um, uh, C-band compatibility and it's pretty unlikely that many will be updated via software to include this. So pay attention going forward, particularly if you're on a Verizon network or you want to be on Verizon's 5G network, look for devices that have N77, um, seek them out. It will matter a lot starting at the end of 2021. If you're on other carriers, it, again, it's going to be important now. All the carriers are going to be using C-band, but maybe not quite as urgently as Verizon. So, like, but still, it can't hurt to have N77 compatibility. Seek this out. This is a, a reason that people who waited for 5G, um, you know, you know, didn't buy in the 5G last year, they're probably ahead of the curve now because they'll be able to buy new devices this year or, or, or next year. They will have N77. If you bought it last year, all your older 5G devices are going to be out in the cold on Verizon. Now, one thing people are going to be asking is, is C-band actually going to matter for our RVers and cruisers, or is this mostly just going to be focused on urban and suburban areas where the networks are already overloaded? And, well, primarily C-band is going to be adding massive capacity in these urban and suburban areas. The, the places where there's congestion is where C-band will be rolled out first. C-band is a relatively short range band, um, all things considered, so it is not gonna be going out over wide open spaces out into rural areas and such like that anytime soon because there's gonna need to be a whole lot more tower infrastructure built to bring this shorter range C-band coverage out to those sort of areas. So for most RVers and cruisers in a lot of places, C-band isn't going to matter hugely right away, but if you are somebody who crosses into places where congestion starts to happen, you know, perhaps it, uh, um, you know, the places snowbirds tend to go, um, like, you know, RVing in Orlando in winter or Quartzsite or so many of the other places, if you're a place in a sort of place where congestion is happening, C-band could matter a whole lot um, come even as late as late 2021, and certainly by 2023 as the other carriers ramp this up and the coverage starts to expand. So C-band is going to matter a lot. Just, you know, maybe it's not a long range, not a wide area capacity concern. And another thing people are going to be wondering about is, well, okay, so Verizon's going to be rolling out this mid-band C-band uh, coverage that could make their 5G network so much faster as, as early as late 2021. How are the plans going to handle this? Well, right now, Verizon's 5G plans, they're basically, they include 5G with all their plans, even their grandfather plans. They're 5G nationwide. This is their 5G that's over their low band, um, basically layered on top of 4G spectrum that is really not all that much better and different than 4G. Or Verizon has their... Um, 5G ultra wideband. This is the millimeter wave spectrum that is only in the hearts of core, um, some major cities, airports, arenas, and they're expanding in various interesting places, but it's super short range and very limited. And to access that spectrum, you need a special, specially provisioned Verizon plan. And it's treated differently. You get, you know, potentially unlimited data on that network, you know, even unlimited hotspot. It's special, but most Verizon plans, most legacy Verizon plans, don't have access to that. So when this millimeter wave coverage comes out, is it, you know, so, so when this um, mid-band C-band coverage comes out, is it going to be treated like 5G nationwide, where everybody gets it, and it's the data is treated just the same as 4G data with the same data caps and limits, or is it going to be treated like ultra-wideband, where there's basically a whole new set of limits, but it requires different plans? These are questions that we probably will not know the answer to until, well, until the network goes live at the end of 2021. So this is, you know, kind of a you know, big deal as far as the, the race for 5G. All the carriers are, you know, moving ahead with their, their plans to, to do things. Um, it is particularly a big deal for Verizon, as we said. But even after spending all of this money, if you look at the nationwide spectrum holdings of all the carriers, T-Mobile is still actually number one because of all that spectrum they got from acquiring Sprint. Um, and Verizon now jumping into number two with all their C-band acquisitions, AT&T number three. And, well, there was a lot of speculation that DISH um, and the cable companies would be spending big in this auction to try and establish themselves to build a really good baseline for future 5G networks. But you know, despite the analyst predictions that they'd be spending billions, 
they for the most part completely sat this auction out. Um, it was clearly too rich for their blood. There was too much, too many billions flowing around, and they just could not compete. So this is really kind of setting up the U.S. market to have three huge major players. When you've got Verizon, AT and T, and T-Mobile with gigantic spectrum holdings, and then everybody else way down here. And there are a few more auctions in the pipeline, but not a lot of spectrum. And C-band was. The big mother load, the last big giant auction that's likely to happen in you know, of low bands of, of sub six gigahertz 5G spectrum in you know, you know the next many many years. So this is setting the stage for the next decade of 5G evolution. We know who the big winners are. We know who's got the spectrum now, and now we just got to see what they do with it. And well, will they actually take all this extra capacity and give us data plans and to really? make this worthwhile. They're, they're going to have to do something with this spectrum now. They have more capacity. Give us data plans so that we can use it. That's an update on the race to 5G, and uh, we'll keep you posted as things continue to evolve. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.